Hello guys, it's Gav. Welcome to another one of my videos. Uh, I can't even remember <laughs> what number the Volt Azure. It, my pop is really playing up today. <laughs> patience, Gav, patience. Right, let's try again. Sorry, it's just not my tripod that I've just twisted around just to do this quickly. Uh, I can't remember what number. <laughs> video this will be it'll be on the when i actually load it up but uh i just wanted to say thanks for stopping by and taking a look at this video uh as i say for me uh it's probably the best way of shooting at the moment in little bits so uh it's the jacket's been covered uh, hopefully i'll stick a photograph i've done taken a couple of photographs so i can also use one as a thumbnail so you'll see how far we've got but uh it's the jacket with the epaulets all that's done uh, and that's about it really. Uh, next time it will be uh, backpack, things like that, but uh, today it's on the, we're featuring the jacket. So thank you very much for stopping by and taking a look. I do appreciate it and I'll catch you down at the bench in a minute. Right guys, uh, thanks for joining me now at the bench. Uh, and that's Archie in the background. Uh, we are going to be using the blue set from Andrea and we're going to be painting uh, the little guy's uh, jacket, obviously. Uh, if we get time, we'll get some we'll get some uh, other colours in there on the collar, uh, turnbacks, all that good stuff. Now, uh, it appears to me to have the short tails on the jacket, so it's a later jacket. So just about the same point uh, between the. Uh, sword and the uh, the uh, cartridge box so obviously the longer tails <laughs> uh, let's use this grubby pin for the moment the longer tails would be deep down here so obviously for an earlier jacket and they quite often would have the red uh, piping on the on the turnbacks uh, we're going to go for just a, a plain white turnback on these I think uh, so um, yeah let's get on with it so uh, there will be there is a tiny bit of the lapels showing under the cross belts as well which is just poking out there we'll deal with that afterwards uh, i think we'll get the blue on first so what i'm going to do is use the number six funny enough the shadow color now the in the blue sets uh, they will have you put the like a, a base paint down first. Uh, I tend not to, it's just how I work. Um, I'm quite happy to, because I like my jackets a bit darker. Uh, I will actually even still put a bit of black in, in this, um, just to, you know, just a touch. Um, again, add it or not, that's up to you, but uh, yeah, a bit of black goes into that uh, as a base coat, and usually about two, two uh, coats of it, uh, and then we work up from there. Well, I've put two coats of the the darkest shadow cover cover color on. That's from the number six bottle, and uh, I've, as I say, I put a, a. I couldn't even give you a percentage. You just have to work it out if you were going to do the same yourself. Uh, but uh, you know, a pinch of black in there, um, and giving it two coats. Now this is uh, because he's a voltageur. Obviously, he's, he's got his a. Uh, his, his sword, his, his uh, briquette, uh, so he's got his sling, sling for that, plus a sling for the cartridge box, and, and obviously all his, his backpack and everything. So it's a fairly complex uh, arrangement. And if you haven't painted these before, uh, I just advise you to. Uh, I still do it. I, you know, you, you leave a gap in the primer where you you think it's actually a, a sling for something, and it's not. You know, uh, I just. Uh, I just advise go careful as well as you're putting dark colours on. You don't, if you can help it, uh, you don't want to put them over your cross belts and that uh, just because it's a dark colour and you're going to be covering it with a light colour and it'll take a bit of extra work. I've got a bit on his collar there, uh, which will be sh uh, chamois or chamois, chamois, <laughs> I know what it is. It's like one of those car leathers that, that you wash your car with. Uh, so uh, that's what he's going to have on his his collar. Uh, I'm probably you'll 
I think I've been calling him from the 12th. Uh, I've actually lost the the online resource that I was using. Uh, couldn't remember uh, what it was uh, that I was painting. So I'm talking about collars and piping here. So I'm going to go for, he's now the 57th. <laughs> He'll keep changing until the entire, entire figure's done and I can roughly say he's from one particular unit. Uh, so yeah, on to the next highlights, which will be, funny enough, number five in the shadow area. I do prefer, it's weird, if I'm doing, uh, oh let me see, get this guy here. If I'm doing a 1 in 35 scale figure like that, I'll quite often do the lighters uh, and mid-tones and then put the shadows in afterwards. Uh, but I suppose I've been doing the War Games figures so long that I, uh, I tend to do the dark shadow areas and then work up to light. Um, and then go back into shadow areas if I if I particularly need to. You tend not to have to on on like French blue type uniforms, Napoleonic uniforms. Um, so some of the thirty year war ones I'm painting, yeah, I will probably put a, an extra wash or or glaze of of a particular colour into the shadow areas if I if I want to make them darker. Um, but uh, this guy's going from dark to light, hopefully. Right, we've got our second shadow colour on. You can just about make out on top of the the darker black blue. Uh, I prefer it to work like that. You know, you can see some some progress already. Not that there's a lot to to do, to be honest with you, on the blue on this figure. Uh, but what we're going to do next is another highlight, and will be which will be the uh, which will it be, Gav? The number two. It's all starting to get worn off now, but uh, as you can see on the back there on our legend. Uh, it says uh, first light. As you can see, our uh, our next highlight has been uh, has, has brought up the the highlights uh, quite well. Uh, it's up to you how how bright, not so much bright, uh, how faded even you you like your your blue jackets. Some people have them. I wouldn't say sky blue, but you know they they have them. A lot lighter than, than I prefer mine. Uh, some people prefer uh, to make them look more indigo, more darker. Um, you know, I can see a reasoning behind all of them. Really, again, your figure's your choice. Uh, I tend to do most of my figures unless there's a particular reason. Roughly, uh, the blues I use anyway um, for this type of figure, roughly the same. Uh, you know, the sets are easy to follow. Uh, I'm happy with the colours uh, that they produce. I don't use the lightest one on this type of blue very often, uh, or if I do, I, I tend to mix it with my last highlight just to give it a bit more uh, push to it, but uh, uh, I try to keep them fairly dark. I think the thing is with, with uh, French uniforms, whether you're having them more of a darker indigo or whether you're having them, uh, you know, roughly around this type of colour, you know, it's it's... It's not to go overboard on the highlights, uh, which is quite easy on a War Games figure, um, because then you shift the colour way out of what it would have been. But again, it's your cut, it's your figures. Your, you know, you do what you want to do. So we're on to our next highlight, uh, which would be probably number three. No, number two. I've no idea. But <laughs> anyway, we'll see what it looks like with another highlight. Right, I've got the next highlight. Uh, I. We'll leave the. I may do one more highlight in places. Uh, it really depends. Uh, as I've said to you guys before, I do the rest of the figure now, and then I go over with different highlights. Uh, if I if I think you know different, whether anywhere from the gaiters up to the plume, if they need you know more work doing to them. Uh, we're going to go on to next probably. Try and get these. There's hardly any of the lapels showing at the top, and more as usual as it normally is at the at the base there. Just see underneath there. So we'll um we'll go to some Vallejos now for that, which will be my usual dark sand, pale sand mix, which I have used to a degree on the waistcoat. So we're going to have to be a bit careful uh, that uh, we show some definition. I, I do like to to show definition quite often as I say I'll do warm trousers and a cold waistcoat so more or less swapping these colours over um, 
and then do a warm, I usually always do a warm uh, lapels uh, and, and turnbacks. We'll do the turnbacks probably in this in the same the same colour. The, the lapels tend to get quite grimy, if not always in a dirty look, but but you know the, the, the material gets a, a more I don't know more warmer look to it with just the with the, the straps you know rubbing up and down on them as they as they're put on and as, as the, the guys are moving in the field. So yeah, that's the that's the blues taken care of for the moment. We've obviously got to do the the different turnbacks as well and cuffs and things, uh, but we'll do these lapels next, and uh, and, and probably let's have a look. Gav, what would you do next? Uh, probably do the collar next, uh, and uh, and then onto the the cuffs and then the epaulets. Right guys, I've used the dark sand from Vallejo uh, to do the lapels and the turnbacks. Uh, I believe this guy was actually a light infantry figure on Mezzes Mini's website because this is obviously an oven post which will say in the title, uh, bought from Mezzes Mini's. Uh, I, uh, I decided I wanted to paint him as a voltageur and that's what I've done. Uh, the colour it won't be that pale. I just wanted to give it a, a bit of a, a, a base colour uh, to work with. Uh, we will then add a bit of of pale sand, which I already have here ready. So we'll put a bit of pale sand into the dark sand, uh, 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 and then put a bit of coverage on on the the lapels and, and the collar. Well, not so much the collar, but the, uh, the yeah the lapels and the turnbacks, I should say. Uh, and then we'll put the pale sand on alone, uh, and occasionally then I will I will put a bit of glazing on of a of a, a, a darker colour sometimes just to add a bit of shade into it. The colour obviously is going to be more of a a dirty a dirty type buff colour if if one of those uh, actually exists, but we'll we'll alter its appearance with a bit of a bit of glazing on top of that. Right, see you on the next one. Right guys, as you can see, I've done the, or just about see, I've done the lapels. That's, forgive me for all the uh, dirty fingernails and the uh, paint all over them. Where are we? There we are, Gav. So we've done the lapels. They're not that far off the waistcoat, to be honest. So I may, I'll see when, when we put the, the actual uh, buttons on and stuff, we'll see uh, what she uh, looks like then or what he looks like. Uh, I will put probably just a couple of spots of ivory uh, down the turnbacks on the tails. Uh, the the collar itself has had uh, a base coat of the dark sand, uh, a bit of light sand again, um, and then some yellow brown, and that just gives it an actual. Uh, it might look a bit yellow uh, under the under the lights, but it's not too bad. I didn't want it yellow, yellow. I know a lot of Veltagers do, but they also have these like chamois uh, collars. So that might be a bit too dark. I don't know. We'll 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 see. As I say, once the overall figure's done, I'll go over bits I'm not too happy with. Uh, the end bit here, by the way, on the bonnet de police. So the soft hats. Right. Oh my life, my pop's playing up today. I call him a pop, by the way, guys. He's ten years old, but uh, dog's always impersonal. I was thinking he's a uh, him and his brother who's passed away now. Is, are our uh, little lads? Anyway, he's decided even at ten years old to go rolling round on his blankets. <laughs> Do apologise for any sound you hear in the background. I was saying the bonnet de police uh, has red tassels and uh, red piping and uh, the red can be seen when it's rolled up so that's why that's left there I, sh I didn't say that earlier and a bit didn't see a bit of primer there but we have some red round in a bit so yeah uh, we've got to do some red piping around that collar and some bits and pieces and, and other places and obviously we've got to do the cuffs as well so that's up next right guys the red I've used is from the Andrea red set uh, which I've 
uh, now put away but you've seen me use before uh, again it's like the blue it just comes in you know numbers uh, and you know they'll have a little chart and a little painting diagram as well for you to use if, if you, you uh, that's what you want to do uh, so now we're going to put some uh, white piping around the cuffs uh, the I can't I don't know if I can get any bit closer I really do like these Avon post uh, sculpts it's a bit hard to see on this one but and my mixing stick is probably way too big a scale but there is some piping there I've gone over it you won't see it, uh, you know particularly when I especially when I've put a badge on uh, but there is a piping there and it's marked out like the the collar now so that makes you know and the same here as you can see on the cuffs so any of you guys are a bit worried if you're learning you know and you, you're a bit worried about doing a straight line uh, that gives you a, a little raised portion uh, or at least carved out portion for you to follow uh, you can I'm, I'm not undecided yet uh, where I've put the red piping around the neck uh, I might turn a bit of it into the uh, the stock and the like the, the shirt top that they sometimes would have out uh, but I don't know if that's really been moulded on there or not it might no I don't think it has I think it's just where I've probably taken too much off uh, off the uh, chemise bit but uh, yeah a bit of tidying up around the collar and the cuffs will be will need to be done but um, and as I said uh, you know being careful with the red and and the blues in that and I managed to get some on the on the uh, on the strap for the uh, for the briquette there so uh, uh, that's something that's going to have to be tidied up but as I say the one problem with the, the, how I'd normally work is I've got a camera over the top of it uh, the light isn't in, in exactly this my overhead pan, painting lamp isn't exactly in the right place that I'd normally do so it tends to uh, throw me off a bit but yeah, as I say, fantastic sculpts. These, uh, the, as I say, the the, the piping's moulded on for you, so so you don't have to to worry about too much, you know, uh, getting straight lines and things like that. Right, so I'll do the white uh, piping. Just tidy. I want to tidy the collar up a bit more uh, and a, a bit around the cuffs, and then we'll get onto the epaulets, and then that'll be. Apart from putting a couple of, well, I think we've only can fit one badge on the one turn back there uh, we'll put a little badge on there and uh, and uh, we'll call that a day right guys uh, I have the white piping done and it might need it's always amazing you look under a camera and you think oh my life that needs tidying up so there's a bit of tidying up to be done on that piece there but uh, I use for the piping I tend to go for sky grey from Vallejo as a base and then sometimes Panzer Uniform winter white or this AK off white does the job just as good. Uh, I don't like it too stark unless there's enough white for me to do a, an extra highlight uh, and then I will use like a cold white uh, but oh, hang on. let's get back out again so we can see but on the whole now just for a piping I used to just usually have the two colours which is the sky grey and some type of off-white um, so yeah I think the next bit now we have got to do Trump it's, it's going to be a very rough hunting horn it's not going to look anything like the real ones on the on the uniforms but uh, I think we'll do the green of the epaulettes they're going to be green uh, with the yellow half moon crest at the top of the epaulette and uh, apart from as I say the the little hunting horn badge on the turn back. Uh, I think that's uh, that's us done. Oh, and the uh, the buttons as well. Uh, normally I'd do everything in one go with any brass work, but I'm just thinking it's it's better for you guys to see it as it as it goes along. So I'll do the brass buttons as well. Well, at least I think they're brass buttons. <laughs> I called the ones I called them out wrong last time, so we'll see. Right guys, quickly rush the figure interview. <laughs> uh, we've got the epaulets done. Sorry, my pop's in full, full vibe. Right, we'll try again. Uh, the epaulets are done. 
Uh, these are the greens I used. Uh, you know, you go with other colours you like. Uh, that was my base. That was my highlight. But then I decided to add. They were a bit too light, so I've added uh, shadows with some Luftwaffe Cam Green from Vallejo. Uh, I often do use that as a base and then work in other greens. But I just wanted to try something a bit different on these. This guy. So uh, he's got all oh, this. Pop of mine wants to join in today. Uh, yeah. Uh, what else have we done? Uh, we've added a bit of ivory to the turnbacks. Uh, I've, I've, you can't really see it, and I've, I've obviously it's only half drawn because of the space to put it in. But there's, there's a there's just to show that there's a hunting horn badge on that turnback there. Uh, I think that's everything. I believe we've got everything covered on that for now. I've done the brass buttons, obviously. So yep, yeah, that's our guy done. So we've got a bit of a red piping at the end of our bonnet de police. There's his little tassel that comes off it. Uh, and that's our guy done for now. Uh, I'm not sure, it'll probably be backpack. Uh, we're gonna do that in like a, a blue, blue and white stripe. Uh, cover over that, the, whatever it, uh, oh, sorry. Words fail me at the moment, but yeah, well that'll be so that'll probably be our section next time. I'm probably gonna do it just for a bit of difference. I'm gonna do this like a brown and white cowhide backpack rather than just a plain brown. Uh, there's not too many straps down. If there's a lot of straps down on a backpack, I tend to just do it one colour just so it you tend to find the white merges in with everything else. So but there isn't here really, so I'm gonna uh, I'm gonna go with uh probably a, a you know the brown and, and white cowhide backpack uh, I tend to do the strapping last because obviously there's so much strapping over everything uh, it, it, uh, you need to do other bits before before that so I tend to do the musket uh, and uh, the backpack and everything you know obviously the I'll often do the the black of the cartridge box and the briquette and the, the shako uh, I'm obviously doing it in portions this time because of obviously making a video So guys, catch you on the next one. And thanks very much for stopping by and taking a look. I do appreciate it. As I say, I put a load of videos up. Uh, again, you know, disclaimer, this is just my way of doing things. So, you know, you uh, you paint your figures how you enjoy painting and that's what it's all about. It's supposed to put a smile on your face. So uh, I just enjoy showing what I'm doing, that's all. So look after yourselves and we'll speak soon.